What is up my disciples, Coding Jesus here. Today's video is going to be part two of the, I guess, two-part series that I, I'm producing called How Quant Trading Firms Trade Faster Than You or How Quant Trading Firms Trade Faster Than You Using This. What the hell is this? Well, if you didn't watch part one, you're not going to understand this part two. So make sure to watch part one to understand what the this is and how they trade faster than you using this. All right. What the hell is this? Well, it's the simple binary encoding protocol. And last time we left off looking at the XML file that's disseminated from the exchange to all market participants. Now, if you watched part one, you know that this little XML file contains all the different types of messages that you can expect to either sent in exchange or received from an exchange and their structure, their fixed structure. Now, last time I discussed the fixed structure of messages, but in today's video, I want to look at messages that have not only variable lengths, but I also want to show you how these messages look when they are sent over the wire. And when I mean wire, I mean from the client to the exchange and the exchange to the client. Alrighty, guys. So let's take a look at variable length messages. Okay. In front of me, what you can see is where we left off last time. We looked at the iLink binary.xml file and the iLink binary.xml file contained the message definition for various messages, but we looked at new order single. Now, as you can see here, we have block length 116. This is the fixed length of this message. Now guys, when I talked about the different structs in my previous video, I never talked about variable length messages. Let's take a look at one of the probably the most commonly sent variable length message sent from a client to the exchange. That is a mass quote 517 message. Now, what is a mass quote 517 message? Well, it's a mass quote message and its ID is 517. So it's colloquially called mass quote 517. Now it has a block length of 92, interestingly. Now you're probably asking yourself, coding Jesus, I thought you said this message has variable length. It does. Block length simply describes the length of the fixed fields in the message. It does not include the variable fields in the message. Let's take a look at some of the fixed fields here. So I'm going to hide the group field here so you can't see it. The fixed field, let's take a look at the first fixed field. Fixed field. Party details list rec ID. I don't even want to get into what that is. That's like a whole separate video. Let's take a look at the next field here. Sending time epoch. What is it? Let's take a look at the description. Time when the message is sent, 64-bit uh, integer expressing the number of nanoseconds since midnight January 1st, 1970 UTC time. All right, that's pretty standard. It's pretty easily understood what this fi fixed field is. Now let's take a look at where the variable field lies. The variable field lies in this group field. What is this group field? <clears throat> it is the quote entries. So this is the actual quotes that I'm sending to the exchange. As you can see the description, the number of quote entries for a quote set. Okay, now every group can have a variable length. For example, in this group, I can send over one quote, two quotes, three quotes, four quotes. There's going to be a given limit of quotes eventually, but I can send, let's say, two, three quotes at a time, eight, maybe even up to 15. I'll have to ch take a look at the actual constraint that's placed on this. I don't think that's described here in this XML file. But regardless, Every little quote set within this group will have a fixed length of 38 bytes. Alrighty. Let's take a look. Now, the first field in this group or in the quote entry that will be in this group is the bid price right here. The name is bid price. What is the bid price? Well, it is the bid price. This goes with the bid price tag 134. That's in the, the tag that corresponds to it in the fixed protocol, the previous protocol. Note that either bid price, offer price, or both must be specified for a new quote. Now this part gets interesting and I'm surprised I included it in the description. Resting quote can be canceled by not providing either one of these four parameters. Now what, what other parameters are they talking about? Let's take a look at the rest of the fields here. The next field is offer price. The next field is Security ID. That's interesting. Security ID as defined by the CME. Okay. The next field is bid size, then offer size, and lastly we have quote set ID. Now, when they say that you can cancel a, quote, a resting quote by not providing uh, uh, by not providing either of these four parameters, they mean the bid price, the offer price, the price, uh, the bid size, and the offer size. So if you don't send any of those, but you send in a security ID and a quote set ID. Of course, that means that you set these other fields to null, these other four fields to null. Then they will cancel your resting quotes. 
Alrighty guys, this is a mass quote message which has variable length. A fixed block length, but a variable total length. That's because it has one variable group in this message. Now you can have other messages that have more than one group. For example, I think party details definition request here, yeah, it has two groups. The first group is here, and the second group is here. So the first group is the party details group, the second group is the trade reg publications group. I don't even know what any of these mean. I don't know what the, uh, I know what party details means. I don't know what trade reg publications grouping is. Um, so we're gonna completely ignore that. But you guys get the point here. I wanted to display variable message uh, types. So as we saw, we saw the mass quote message and this is the whatever party details definition request. All right, now guys, we're gonna take a look at how simple binary encoded messages actually look like in hexadecimal and how they're sent over the wire. Coding Jesus, what the hell do you mean over the wire? I mean how they're sent from the exchange to a client system or from the client system to the exchange. Alrighty, as you can see in front of me, I have something called Wireshark open. Now Wireshark is used to sniff packets or analyze packets that are being sent from an exchange to a client or from a client to an exchange. Because this is a communication stream that uses entirely simple binary encoding, you're only going to see simple binary encoding messages here. How do I know that there's only simple binary encoded messaging here? Take a look at the protocol. Protocol says here, ILINK3 SBE, simple binary encoding, version 8.7. Now this is a plugin that I downloaded from the Open Markets Initiative that can work with Wireshark. I'll include it in the link in the description box below. And I actually contributed in an open source fashion to the Open Markets Initiative because I use Wireshark almost daily to look through packets sometimes. And I noticed there was a bug in one of them, so I ended up fixing uh, what the bug was. And so you might see me in the contributor section of this open source uh, plugin. Regardless, guys, let's actually get into the content here. So let's take a look at one of these packets. Let's take a look at the second packet. Alrighty, guys. Now, what do we have here? Well, guys, in my previous message, I stated that every simple binary encoded message contains two parts, the header and the payload. I lied. I deceived you. Every simple binary encoded message has three parts. It has a simple open framing header, the message header, and the payload. So we already talked about these two ones. What the heck's a simple open framing header coding Jesus? The simple open framing header specifies two things, the message length, including the header, the whole thing, the whole message length, so including both headers and the payload, so all these three parts, and the encoding type. Now, I don't wanna to get too deep into the encoding type, but in every simple binary encoded message, the encoding type is gonna be the exact same thing. Okay, so let's take a look at this message. Well, as we can see here, this message is 46 bytes long, and indeed, that is confirmed by the message length in the simple open framing header. The encoding type, as you can see here, is FICA. FICA, which is the simple binary encoding encoding type. That is just a constant, it's just FICA. Don't ask me why, that's just what the CME decided on. Okay, so if you ever look through an array of bytes, so if you ever look through like a hexadecimal string, of, a hexadecimal string, and you see FICA, hey, maybe this is a simple binary encoded message. All right, the next thing we're gonna look at is what we discussed in part one, which is the message header. The first thing is the block length, all right? The block length is 32 bytes. Now the block length is this payload length, all right? It doesn't include this message header. This message length in the simple open framing header includes the length of all of this. But the block length in the message header is only the length of this negotiate response message or the payload, the actual simple binary encoded message. All right, the next thing we have here is template ID, which is really the message ID, which is 501. Then we have the schema ID and the schema version ID, which we discussed in part one as well. Now, let's finally take a look at the actual message. This is a negotiate response message, all right? What the hell is a negotiate response message coding Jesus? A negotiate response message is the first message that an exchange will send back to you after you've attempted to log on. So there's a whole log on process and the negotiate response message is the first message you'll receive from the exchange. Now it contains something called a UUID. That's not important. It contains a request timestamp. What exactly that is, you can probably guess. Uh, it contains a secure key 
secret key secure ID expiration, which I think is a number of days that this key is valid. I'll have to take a look. And the fault tolerance indicator, split message, previous seek non previous UUID. All right, what does all this mean? You don't even have to ask me that question. You can go to that XML file and take a look at what fault tolerance indicator, for example, is, and then negotiate response 501 message. The description of that, I believe, is whether or not this message is being sent over a primary connection or a backup connection. As you can see, this plugin, this decoder, decodes this stream of bytes and it decodes what the fault tolerance indicator value is, which is primary. Meaning this isn't a backup, it is a primary connection. As you can see here, the previous sequence number is zero. Now, why is that? You should know this. I previously told you that the negotiate response message is the first message sent from an exchange during, a, during the logon process. Hence, there was no previous sequence number for the exchange to start. And the sequence number is simply the number associated with the packet being sent from the exchange to the actual client. There was no previous sequence number, so the previous sequence number was zero. It's the start of this connection, the start of our communication. Alrighty guys, hopefully actually seeing how this looks like in Wireshark really solidified your understanding of simple binary encoding. I hope you enjoyed this two-part series about simple binary encoding. If you did, please give me a like. I rarely mention that. I think we have only one out of every 10 viewer actually liking this video. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, share it with your friends. Hopefully it was interesting for you guys and educational. And if you'd like to support this channel, guys, Patreon link in the description box below. Patrons are the lifeblood of this channel, and there's a bunch of really sick perks that come along with being a patron. There's a Discord link in the description box below, guys. And if you'd like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with me, whether you'd like to talk career, like to talk code, like to talk software engineering, like to talk trading, you can do so. Hit me up at thecodingjesus at codingjesus.com. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Once again, cheers.